going to learn the differences between period and frequency. Period is by definition the amount of time divided by the number of cycles completed. Frequency is by definition the number of cycles over time. Use period and frequency to describe this phenomena in your notebook. Also explain who has more frequency, Isaac or Rab. Don't forget to describe who has more period, Isaac or Rab. I flash my light 18 times, spending 18 seconds, which means the time between two flashes remained constant, which is one second. Therefore, my period was one second and my frequency was one hertz. I flashed my light nine times, spending 18 seconds. For my period was two seconds and my frequency was 0 0.5 hertz. Here you can see there were one, two, three, and four full cycles of the wave. And we're saying that it takes 12 seconds. So, since we defined the period as the amount of seconds it takes per cycle, the period is 12 seconds over 4 cycles is 3 seconds per cycle. Let's use the definition. Frequency is cycle over time. 4 cycle over 12 seconds. 4 over 12 is 1 over 3, which is 0 0.33 hertz. Can you demo this one? Yeah, can you draw circles? And the radius is 1 meter. Let's pretend that it took exactly 12 seconds. Then the frequency was one cycle every three seconds, 0.33 hertz. I'm gonna drop this one through a spark timer. Okay, so you have to use some imagination because I don't have a spark timer. With if we have a spark timer with 10 hertz, what that really means is that it's giving out 10 dots per second. And if the object is falling for exactly one second, then that means that we have to draw. 10 dots. That's 2, 3, 4, 5. As you can see, between the dots, all of the times are the same. Between these 0 0.1 seconds, 0 0.1 seconds, 0 0.1 seconds, so on and so forth. However, the distance between each dot is not constant. It goes from 5 centimeters to 15 centimeters to 25 centimeters to 35, etc. And you can see a pattern here that each time it's increasing by 10 centimeters, and we call that linear growth. So while the time between each of these dots is constant, the distance between them grows linearly. Now I want to show you that the total distance increases quadratically. If we add all of these up, 5 centimeters, 15 centimeters, all the way to 95 centimeters, we get 500 centimeters, which is 5 meters. Now you can get the exact same answer using the equation that we know and love, the kinematics equation. D is equal to half AT squared. Now if I just plug in the numbers, A is the acceleration due to gravity, and we let the ball fall for one second, that gives us five meters as expected. Now, let's verify this answer by drawing a VT graph. So, here is my VT graph, T on the x-axis, V on the y-axis, and we start with a uh, initial velocity of zero and let the ball fall for one second and the final velocity is minus 10 meters per second now the area under this graph should be exactly five meters so is this area five meters well let's see this area is one half bh where b the base is one second and the height is 10 so half one times 10 once again gives us our final answer of five meters our goal is to find acceleration due to gravity. So we're going to let this mass fall. This mass is going to be in free fall and is going to collect some distances. We know that when you let an object fall, free fall with initial velocity zero, the distance increases quadratically, velocity increases linearly, 
and acceleration remain constant which is 9.8 and that is what we want to measure whether it is 9.8 or something else. What we need? We need tape. So, let us see uh, about a meter long tape. You are going to feed the tape to this valve timer. So, put it inside, attach the mass. So, you are going to collect the distance to verify whether distance increases quadratically which is d is equal to VAT plus half a d square and VA is 0. All right. So, turn on this spark timer. All right. Let it go. See whether the distance increases quadratically. So, you are going to put a line on each dot to make it as visible as possible. All right. So, as you see that the distance increases quadratically, the distance increases quadratically. So, this is 1.5 centimeter. displacement is 0 0.015 over 1 and the time is 1 over 60 because this one, one takes 1 over 60 this one and so on. Uh, so 0 0.015 divided by 1 times you flip it 60 over 1. So basically you are going to multiply everything by 60. So 0 0.9 So this is the time in second and this is velocity in meter per second. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 1 over 60, 1, 2, 3, 4, 2 over 60, 1, 2, 3, 4. So point 0.9 is right here. The second point is 1.1, 1 .1, uh, 2 over 60, 1.1. 1 .1. 2 over 60, 1.1. The third point is 3 over 60, 1.3. Or 60, 1.3. 4 over 60, 1.5. 1 1.5. 5 over 60, 1.6. So we have this two point. 5 over 60, comma, 0.8, let's say 3, 6. 0.84. Uh, and this one may be let's say point 1.5 over 60 comma 1 meter per second square. So acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meter per second square. Now find the frequency and period of these three graphs. See what Frosty the snowman here has discovered. Alright, so let's read this. When as the period goes up, the frequency of a wave goes down because the period is the inverse of frequency. That's correct, Frosty. Frosty the snowman was a jolly happy soul.